Today I'm going to share with you guys my thoughts on the development roadmap and we're going to start right now. What's up guys, Reckless here and welcome to Guardian Watcher. If it's your first time here and you love Destiny and learning all things about the game, then subscribe and click on the bell, that way you guys don't miss out on anything. So, sometime last week, Bungie had released their Destiny 2 development roadmap for the beginning of the spring. This roadmap covers what is going to happen for Destiny 2 from January to May 2018. I'm pretty sure most of you guys have already read it, but if you haven't, don't worry because I'm going to put each section of it on screen or you can check it out in the link I left in the description below. So let's start with January. As you may or may not know, update 1.1.2 has already went live last Tuesday. This introduced Masterworks armor, new raid rewards, raid perks, a buff to the Prometheus lens, many fixes, exotics and heroic strikes, challenges for Mercury on adventures as well as in quick play and many others. If you guys would like an in-depth look at what the update entails then you can check out the video that I have already done shown in the annotation on screen or at the end of this video. As we move on to February 27th 2018, update 1.1.3 will go live. This update is focused on strikes and the social aspect of the game. This will introduce nightfall scoring and high score tracking and also with this addition the time warp mechanic for Destiny 2 will officially be gone. And Bungie has already mentioned that before. Next emblems and the aura system will get a rework and if you guys don't know you can get an aura after you complete the prestige version of the nightfall or the raid. We will finally be able to see our fire team members on the destination map and in my opinion that should have been in the game when it was first released back in September. Next, public chat for the PC in public spaces will be added, exotic repetition will be getting a reduction finally, companion mods and shader interaction as well as companion vendor viewing whatever those are, and then we have Nightfall Strike unique rewards. As of March 27, 2018, we will have update 1.1.4 releasing, which focuses on the sandbox and the crucible. For this, there will be weapon and ability sandbox changes, heroic strike modifiers will be added, 6v6 for the iron banner, a third playlist will be added, which includes the mayhem game mode, nightfall challenge cards will be added to the game, whatever that is, penalties for quitting crucible will be added, as well as repeat crucible map and strike protection. Now, this could be taken several different ways. The first way is that Bungie fixes repetitive crucible maps one match after another or this could mean that a map from Destiny 1 could be returning. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But let me know in the comments which one of those you think that actually means when it comes to the repeat crucible map and strike protection. Last but not least for March we have exotic weapon and armor sandbox changes but then again, we don't see anything for April at all, which is kind of weird. Actually, the next update after March doesn't actually come until May 2018, but even then, there's not even a date. This will start update 1.2.0. In May, the Eater of Worlds prestige mode will be coming, but I thought Bungie said that when they create raids, they do them backwards and make the hard mode or prestige mode first and then dumb down the normal versions. The Eater of Worlds raid lair doesn't have a lot of bugs, let alone ones that affect the raid that much. So I don't know why it's taken so long to get the prestige version of that raid to come out. But okay, moving on. We will be getting seasonal rankings as well as private matches for the Crucible come May. More vault space, which I don't even think we need is also coming. The infamous multi emote wheel is still going to be a thing apparently. Also in May, Bungie will be introducing masterworks to exotics and I am definitely interested to see how they plan on doing that. This probably out of everything has caught my interest a lot more than anything that will be mentioned in this video. Next we have seasonal vendor progression question mark three times as well as faction rally improvements. And the last thing from May is that the mods will be getting improvements. Keep note that the Nightfall Strike unique rewards, exotic weapon and armor sandbox changes, and the mod system improvements all have a little asterisk on them which at the bottom reads, and I quote, these features are stretch goals that have a chance to slip to a later release, end quote. So be prepared for them to come at a later time just in case. 
Now that all of that agonizing pain is over, what do we actually think about it all? Well, these are just little bits of information about what is to come. In no way is this the entire update for each month. The issue that a lot of us are having, including myself, is that most of these things should have been in the game from the start, which is why it's becoming very hard for a lot of Guardians to want to come back to Destiny 2. Personally, I like the game a lot. From D1 to D2, I have been a very dedicated player, and I will always continue to be. I don't fall into the traps of the whole microtransaction crap, but am I mad that a lot of the cool gear is locked away in Eververse? Yes. But that's not going to stop me from grinding. Destiny and Destiny 2 are grind games. Maybe not as grindy as Monster Hunter World, which is an amazing game, but they are still grind games. You keep playing until you get what you want, then destroy things in the next fight. And one thing is I am getting sick and tired of hearing people complain and saying that Destiny or Destiny 2 is dead. But yet those are the same people that are still in the Bungie.net forums, Reddit, or in the Destiny or Destiny 2 Facebook groups. It's like bro, if the game is so dead, then why are you sticking around? But wait, Reckless, didn't you say not too long ago that Destiny 2 is dying? Yes, I did. But I don't go running around everywhere screaming at every chance I get. Truthfully, I think that those people either just need to stop gaming because they will never be satisfied. I am still a dedicated player to Destiny and I will be because I love this game and I know that it has potential to get back to its true greatness. Sorry for the rant, but getting back to the video. As I have said in the development update video, this is another stepping stone in the right direction for Bungie. Unfortunately, it's a stepping stone that comes at a price, and that price is time. Many of us have already invested a lot of time into the game, but are willing to invest more given the right circumstances. And the right circumstances is not microtransactions. It's not grinding for gear and never getting what you want. It's not going into a crucible matches and repeating the same map over and over at least three times. It's not decrypting an exotic engram and getting the same exotic you already have in a row. Hopefully these are things that Bungie can fix. So let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the development roadmap and everything that Bungie has planned for the coming months. Whether it's good, bad, doesn't matter. I want to know your thoughts on the matter. And if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to watch these other two Destiny videos. You never know, you just might like them. And if you do, leave a like, share them, and then come back for more because you know you want to. Thank you guys for watching, and remember, less guns doesn't mean less crime. And I will see you guys next time.